So when someone asks me what distribution they should use when they first start using Linux, the almost universal answer I give them is that the only thing that truly matters is the package manager, because really, at the end of the day, that's all that's different between any given Linux distribution. Now, I can hear people in the comments saying, well, that's not true, you know, there's different kernels, and there's different login managers, and there's different init systems, and... That's all true, for sure. But when it comes to the mainstream Linux distributions that everyone's going to start out with, Ubuntu, Fedora, Arch, Arch-based distros, things like that, the vast majority of them all use the same init system. The vast majority of them choose between two different display managers. And all of them offer the same number of window managers and desktop environments. Those things are all almost universally the same across every Linux distribution. There are, I'm sure, some exceptions, but for the most part, that's true. So the one thing that I always tell everyone that matters the most when you're choosing a distribution is the package manager, because the package manager is the one thing that's guaranteed to be different across different distributions. So Ubuntu-based distributions and Ubuntu itself use apt. Arch-based distributions use Pac-Man. Fedora-based distributions or RHEL-based distributions use DNF. You know, those are the three main package managers. I mean, if you're going to use OpenSUSE, I suppose you'd use Zip or Zipper. You know, you get the idea. Depending on what distribution you use, you're going to have a different package manager. So that led me to ask the question, after all this time, do package managers actually matter? And after using Linux now for five years, or at least close to five years full time, I think I finally have the answer to that question. And the answer to the question, do package managers actually matter, is no. What package manager you use does not matter. It really seriously doesn't. Do they have differences between them? Yes. Pac-Man seems to be the fastest. I don't really have numbers to back that up, but it feels the fastest. Uh, DNF and Zipper, those seem slower than the other package managers, and they have different features. Um, apt seems to be about middle of the road, but still really good. You know, But the point is, is that other than varying levels of speed, which a lot of time has to do with the way those package managers handle mirrors, there's really not any big difference between them. They all install software, they all do system updates. The syntax may be different, but they all do basically the same thing. Some of them have a few extra features that are cool, but for the most part, they do one thing, and that's what they're supposed to do. So those things really don't matter. Which one you choose doesn't really matter. What actually matters when you're making the choice between what distribution to use is package availability because while the package managers themselves may all be the same or at least do the same thing the packages that they have available to them is actually different so for example if you're on Solus and you're using Solus Linux and you get into the package manager or you get into the terminal and use their package manager which is EO package their repos are much smaller than any other distro. Well, maybe not any other distro, but compared to like Ubuntu, their repositories are much smaller. Uh, same thing if you hop into Elementary OS. You're going to have a smaller selection of hardware because they limit by default to flat packs. Okay? In order to install like dev packages or something like that, you have to do a little bit of work. It will still work eventually, but you know, you have to kind of finagle your way in, in order to get there. If you're using something like Arch, on the other hand, you have access to a much broader selection of software, plus you have the added benefits of the AUR. If you are on Fedora, you have a very large pool of software to choose from that's available from Fedora. Then they have other repositories for non-free software, and they have the COPR, which adds even more software to the whole thing. Same thing with Ubuntu. They have a wide variety of software in their repositories, but they also have access to the Debian repositories. So they have a large selection of software. So when choosing a distro, what you're really choosing is what software you have available to you, because that's really the biggest difference between distros. What software do you have available to you in the software repositories of those distributions? And... The thing is, even today, is that there is a wide difference between what distribution A and distribution B have in the repositories. So if you compare Debian and you compare Fedora, 
the packages that they have in their repositories are going to be significantly different. Not necessarily in terms of actual software, but in terms of versions. So the software that's going to be in the Debian repositories is going to be, or at least tends to be, much older than the software in the Fedora repository. And the Fedora repository has software that is kind of somewhat up to date, When, but when you compare it to, say, Arch Linux, you're going to find newer packages in the Arch repositories than you would in Fedora. It's all a matter of how the distribution treats packages and how it allows users to have access to that software. So f when you're talking about Arch, you're talking about a rolling distribution. So all of that software is going to be as up to date as possible. With Fedora, it's a little bit different because it's kind of a rolling release. It's not really a rolling release, but it has access to more software that is more frequently updated than Debian. Whereas Debian is kind of set on a release schedule and you get what software comes with that particular release. You know, each release has its own repos and that's the software pool that you pull from. So when you're talking about package managers and if they matter, the bottom line is really what you're talking about isn't the software tool itself, but the software that the package manager has available to it. And that is what's going to be different between different distributions. Now, the bottom line when it comes to all of this is choosing the best one for you. And that process is going to be an adventure for you because really the only way you can make the choice of what software repository is the best for you is to actually try them out because they all do things in a little bit different way when it comes to what versions of software they keep. Now, the elephant in the room here are the containerized package managers because those are much more cross-platform than any other package manager. So like if you talk about Pac-Man and the Arch repos, those are dedicated for Arch. You're not going to use them on any other distribution. That's not true with Snaps, flat packs, or App Images. All three of those formats can be easily used on any distribution. So when you're choosing between those, it's even more of a case of what software is available to you because when you use one of those things, they all function from a user perspective almost exactly the same, okay? Because for the most part, when you download something from either of those three formats, you're going to do so from a GUI. You're going to download things either from the GNOME Software Center or whatever it is, whatever your GUI package manager is. So that front-end experience is going to be the same for most everything. App images are going to be a little bit different because they're not really included in any of those package ma manager or GUI software stores. So really we should just leave those out but they have their own store so you'd be dealing again with probably a front-end gui software center for app images as well if you're going to install those things from the terminal then you're going to see some differences like snap has a more apt like syntax than Flatpaks does so it's going to be a little bit different from the command line but the point is is that at the end of the day they function from a user perspective almost exactly the same you install them and then you use them that's really the way it is. So the only thing that really truly differs between them, other than a few technical problems that Snaps seem to have, is the software that is available to them. So when it comes to software availability, that's, again, the biggest issue. So Snap has access to the Snap Store, which is the only place where Snaps can come from. Well, that's not true. They can be made by other people, but for the most part, if you're going to download a Snap, that actually almost is certainly coming from the Snap Store. With Flatpak, that's a little bit different because chances are you're going to be reliant on your distribution for your initial access to Flatpak. So, for example, with Fedora and Elementary OS, they both maintain their own repository for their Flatpaks. That's what you get out of the box. If you want to have access to more flat packs, you'd then have to add the flat hub repository, which then broadens your horizons when it comes to software. For app images, it's a mess. They do have a store now that they're putting stuff together, but it's still not up to the other two stores. And you can get those many, many other places. Most app images probably still come from the individual software vendors. The one thing I didn't mention about flat packs is that they can also be given out by the developers of software. So if you go to like a GitHub page, they may offer you a flat pack that you can then install uh, manually through the terminal or something like that. And, you know, 
that's not something you'll ever see with Snaps because Snaps is usually almost 100% actually uh, provided by the Snap Store. So again, the bottom line is that the availability of software is what is really truly differentiating every single package manager. And that's what you have to look at when you decide what distribution you're going to use and what containerized package format you're going to choose. Because it doesn't really matter what you choose. It only matters if you can get the software that you need. So that is it for this video. If you have thoughts on this whole idea that package managers don't really matter, leave those comments in the comment section below because I know I'm going to hear from some people like, oh, but Pac-Man is so good and DNF is so good and uh, apt is amazing, you know, and you know, you can still have your favorites when it comes to package managers, right? You can, like my favorite package manager of all time is Pac-Man. I don't use it anymore because I'm on Fedora, but it is still a really good package manager. I like it because it's fast and there's a lot of stuff you can do with it. But at the end of the day, really all it ever does, all it's ever going to do is download apps and update the system. That's really all it's ever going to do. And in that way, it's exactly like every other package manager. So, again, comments in the comment section below. You can follow me on Twitter at LinuxCast if you want to follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey, those links will be in the video description along with a whole bunch of other social media links. So uh, check that out below. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash the Linux cast, just like all of these fine people. I'd like to take one thing, my current patrons. All of you are fine and fantastic people. And I never really know the words that I need to speak in order to express the level of my gratitude that I have for all everyone who supports me on Patreon and YouTube. But it turns out the best words are just thank you so much. And thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.